Hello, hello, Mordimers here, and today I would like to show you one more game from Crazy Round 5. Uh, crazy because Magnus Carlsen already lost to Anish Giri, and if you haven't seen that game, check the link over there, watch after this game, but today I would like to show you one more game, uh, also very, very uh, interesting. We have Fabiano Caruana. Uh, and we have Hikaru Nakamura and first game in this match was won by uh, Caruana in the end game and then uh, the second game was won by Nakamura then we had the two draws and now we're gonna have the blitz game where Nakamura uh, choose to play as black he had the choice and this is in Armageddon system where Nakamura uh, to win uh, the match he has to only draw as black and he has four minutes and Fabiano Caruana has five minutes as white but he has to win so very interesting format for that and winner uh, gonna get two points and loser gonna get one point and just short explanation about the rankings because I take the blitz rankings for this because this is the Armageddon five versus four minutes so Fabiano Caruana 2711 and Hikaru Nakamura number one in the world in blitz by ranking and 2900 this is just incredible and without further ado let's jump on the board and see what just happened we have d4 by uh, Fabiano Caruana we have knight on f6 c4 e6 knight f3 and d5 so uh, queen's gambit declined knight on c3 now bishop e7 pretty standard stuff and now not bishop on g5 in this tournament and uh, i think in the last months maybe even years uh, bishop f4 was more popular i see it very often when i comment some games especially uh, from 2020 uh, and here Fabiano Caruana play uh, bishop on f4, Nakamura play castle and now we have e3, knight b on d7 and here in the first game which uh, Fabiano Caruana won he plays c5, okay, he plays c5 and attack on the, on the queen side and he won um, in the end game, however here he plays c takes on d5, so different approach and it's not really great for white however Fabiano Caruana said that uh, this is pretty good for the blitz okay so so he, he is definitely prepared we have knight takes on d5 knight takes on d5 e takes on d5 and now bishop on d3 so a pretty standard setup uh, of the uh, queen's gambit declined where uh, white doesn't have the the c pawn and uh, black doesn't have the, the e pawn okay so there are uh, semi open files and here uh, nakamura play c5 so challenging the center and uh, what white can play can of course take the pawn and then uh, black would have to play with isolated queen's pawn but fabiano caruana is not interested and he just castle uh, we have c4 by nakamura so now he created the uh, majority on the queen side now he has the three pawns uh, against these two pawns so he gonna uh, try to use this advantage on the queen side however uh, white have uh, the advantage in the center so e4 is possible but for now bishop c2 as bishop is under attack so bishop c2 now b5 attacking on the queen side and here e4 is possible immediately just uh, not played in this game but it's quite popular after knight on f6 e5 knight e4 and the game can continue uh, however here uh, Fabiano Caruana play b3 uh, so challenging this uh, pawn structure and now we have a5 uh, b takes on c4 and now how would you take as black uh, this is quite interesting because it looks like this could be very very strong move uh, because these three pawns would be very powerful on the queen side very dangerous however after queen on b1 attacking this undefended pawn and also h7 that's not so clear for example b4 now winning the pawn a king h8 bishop e4 with tempo on the rook um, 
and white has extra pawn and I think can block these pawns uh, which are still very dangerous uh, but this five pawns uh, against these two pawns uh, and totally control uh, of the center of the board uh, white definitely has much easier game here but Hikaru Nakamura of course is not interested and he takes B takes on C4. So now he created the passed pawn, it's protected passed pawn, however uh, D5 pawn is not so strong, so uh, still very loosey. Uh, so have to keep an eye on that. Uh, we have Rook on B1 getting the uh, open file and now look why this bishop on F4 is uh, quite annoying because it's controlling B8 and C7, okay? So uh, this is the idea instead of playing on G5. It's quite interesting, especially in the position like that. Now we have Bishop on B4. And bishop on b4 is a very strong move because it's not only blocking the rook from entering the, the black's position, but also it controls e1 square. So the rook can't come to e1 just to support e4. So quite important. Uh, Fabiano Caruana uh, answer uh, very calmly h3. So making the space for the, for the king if needed, but also uh, the bishop can retreat if needed. Uh, we have rook on a6. So so another good move by Hikaru Nakamura. Now uh, the rook is fully operational and can enter on the sixth rank uh, on any square uh, to support any moves or play against some moves. Uh, what are we gonna see in the game? We have queen on e2 as rook on e1 to support e4 is impossible. So we have queen on e2. Now uh, e4 is possible, but also if black decide to, to take this e4, then the queen will always look at uh, at c4. Of course, not after taking because the the knight is still on f3. But just in the future, uh, this is quite good move. We have knight on f6 by Hikaru Nakamura, and now knight on e5, bishop on e6. So developing uh, last pieces, and now f3, uh, f3 controls e4 so the knight can't jump there but also supporting e4 so e4 is you know closer and closer so uh, fabiano caruana definitely preparing e4 uh, and now we have knight on d7 asking uh, white to exchange the pieces uh, and here knight on g4 so F fabiano caruana is not interested we have rook on e8 and rook f on d1 so rook e1 was not possible so rook on d1 uh, and now this rook actually supports d4 so if d5 disappears then this pawn can march uh, it doesn't look like it's possible yet but after e4 everything can happen uh, and now Hikaru Nakamura has to decide what to do and he can go for example for h5 he can go for f5 the moves like that kick the knight uh, but he decide uh, something else he changed the structures he exchanged a couple of pieces so bishop on g4 we have h takes on g4 and now bishop d6 uh, actually uh, forcing white to exchange also this bishop so we have bishop on d6 rook on d6 and here Fabiano Caruana could go for e4 however he thinks it's too early so he want to improve position of his pieces first and he play rook on b7 very sneaky because now bishop can go to a4 pin this knight and it's very very unpleasant pin so uh, Hikaru goes knight on f8 uh, and now we have queen on f2 preparing e4 so uh, Fabiano Caruana don't want to have the queen uh, on the e file as the rook is already on the e file so uh, e4 is not as dangerous uh, with the queen on e2 so uh, queen on f2 and now black could go for something like the rook d on e6 with the pressure on e3. However, it's not so great because after rook on b5, uh, black, yes, can win the e3 pawn. However, after bishop on e4, this rook is quite trapped. So uh, 
that exchange is just not really great so probably rook on a3 but now rook d5 with the attack on the queen okay queen e7 and black stands uh, not really great here so uh, definitely not good idea uh, hikaru nakamura goes rook on f6 so now e4 is still not possible as this pawn is pinned so cannot support uh, e4 move uh, we have rook d on b1 so uh, double the rooks on the b file and now queen on d6 uh, and here g5 and now we have rook f on e6 so now attacking this e3 but now fabiano caruana is ready to push and he play e4 and now important decision for black what to play uh, d takes on e4 not really great f takes on e4 now uh, rooks from the sixth rank maybe to seven but uh, e5 first and these two pawns uh, are quite okay quite strong also look at this bishop looking on h7 there are still some ideas here uh, with this pawn controlling h6 it can be very hot very dangerous there so uh, black would have to be very very careful uh, also queen on f4 uh, it's possible but after e5 yes can win this pawn f4 queen g4 and it's still pretty okay okay this uh, f5 is coming so uh, not really comfortable as well so hikaru nakamura don't want to uh, play this positional game he want to complicate a, a bit so he play queen on a3 so he want to activate the the queen and find some target in the white base uh, we have e5 as expected and now rook 6 on e7 uh, and now a uh, rook from the seven rack retreat to the fifth rank and attacking d5 black of course can play uh, rook on d7 just defend that and after a uh, queen on d2 uh, double attack here uh, also can defend but it's pretty passive for example f4 queen g3 is possible uh, f5 and look at this pawn so uh, also not really greatest idea to be very passive here so if hikaru play queen on a3 uh, he should continue in this fashion so he play queen on c3 okay and now he put the pressure on the pawn also on the bishop so white should be careful here from the other hand this pawn is now hanging okay hikaru uh, didn't bother to defend it so fabiano caruana play rook takes on d5 and now we have knight on e6 now putting the pressure on d4 uh, what to play now uh, f4 is the idea here to push the pawn however after f4 uh, black could play something like knight on f4 okay and if knight is taken then the bishop is hanging here so white would have to play maybe something like this uh, and yes this is possible white stands better but fabiano caruana play much more precise move and he play bishop on a4 so uh, getting out of the queen's radar so now there are no tricks after f4 there are no tricks here uh, and also he doing that with the tempo so this rook now has to move we have rook on f8 and only now f4 so now uh, taking the the pawn is impossible so we have g6 g6 controlling f5 but also preparing the the space for the knight so knight can jump to g7 and then to f5 and then still put the pressure on d4 but also uh, there would be some ideas of jumping to you know other squares so uh, that would be pretty nasty uh, we have rook on d6 knight g7 as planned and now bishop on c2 so retreating with the bishop controlling now f5 so now the jump is not so great and this is why hikaru nakamura play knight on e8 so remaneuvering the knight uh, but with the tempo on the rook so we have rook on c6 and now rook on d7 uh, so attacking the pawn on d4 which is already attacked twice and defended only once so fabiano caruana defended 
And here Hikaru Nakamura play knight on c7, so bringing extra control to uh, d5, but also e6, so the pawns can't be pushed now. Uh, and now we have bishop on e4, so uh, Fabiano Caruana fights for this d5 move now, however he had a very interesting moves here, bishop on b3, and now bishop can't be taken because of this pin, so for example knight on d5, now rook c4 winning this pawn, and black um, doesn't have the counterplay now without the passed pawn, uh, queen e3, that would be pretty sneaky, of course it can't be taken because of the of this fork, so uh, that's not really great, so rook on c5 was possible, and then queen f2, king f2, knight f4, just exchanging couple of pawns, and with two extra pawns, white could do very very well and should win that game. So that was uh, pretty possible, however as I said bishop e4 was played, so uh, more positional move now, preparing d5. Uh, we have rook f on d8, so putting more pressure on this pawn, and now f5 was possible, f5 was definitely the best move here, and now uh, it's a pretty sneaky idea, uh, there is a lot of ideas here, okay, now the pawns can be pu can be pushed, of course uh, f6, uh, f takes on g6, a lot of possibilities here, very rich position, uh, attacking position for white, uh, but for example black could take on d4, uh, and just exchange the, the minor pieces as well, However, there is one interesting line here, so for example knight on d5, if black don't want to, you know, lose this knight for the bishop, uh, then look how that could end, bishop on d5, rook on d5, putting still the pressure on d5, and now white can wait and set up the trap and play something like king on h2 and wait what's gonna happen, if black takes uh, on d4, that's actually very dangerous, queen d4, and that's winning the rook and the game. And now uh, you of course can't take the, the queen, because rook c8, check mating black king, okay, f6, and that would be a checkmate. So very interesting that in this position, uh, you know, such a weakness on the 8th rank is, it's still somewhere on the radar, so uh, Hikaru Nakamura has to be very careful here. However, Caruana play queen on f3, queen on f3 and actually it gives chance uh, to Nakamura to equalize the game, okay, and he can neutralize most of the threats. Uh, feel free to pause the video and find the best move for black, while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So the move we are looking for is knight on b5, and it looks like, you, you know, nothing special in this move, but look at this, queen on c3, now knight on c3, and now the rook is under attack, the bishop is under attack, so rook on e1, but now rook d4, bishop on f3, and now rook f4, and how white gonna win with these pawns? Uh, definitely impossible, uh, black are pretty safe here, and uh, maybe white even have to uh, fight for a draw, uh, however white could play d5, and this is where the magic uh, could start to happen, knight on d4, look at this move, so for now attacking the rook and attacking the queen, uh, and what to do now, uh, if queen on c3, this looks pretty good, okay, queen on c3, then knight e2 with check, now knight c3 again with the attack on the rook and on the bishop, now rook on d4, uh, and just take the bishop uh, and rook on e4, and now rook e on c4, and uh, the game can continue, and white has extra pawn, uh, but I think uh, Hikaru Nakamura would manage to, to draw this, this rook endgame, as, as the rook endgames are, are definitely uh, much easier to draw than any other, so uh, 
definitely does, that was a chance for Hikaru Nakamura, but he didn't go for knight on b5, he just exchanged the queens. So we had queen on f3 and now bishop on f3. And again, what to play here as uh, Hikaru Nakamura? Knight on b5 now is uh, a bit too late. Uh, actually, it's possible to win some pawns here, but uh, not for free. So for example, d5, knight on c3 attacking the rook, attacking the pawn, rook d2 now winning this pawn, but also a white can get back this pawn, this c4 pawn. And now knight b6 exchanging the rooks, rook c2, and black would have the problem problems to actually uh, continue the game, how to draw this game. With the bishop and one extra pawn it's uh, not so easy as knight gonna be uh, much worse in these endings. So it's not the same like we had the clear uh, rook endings, it's much more easier to draw but this one would be very very difficult. So Hikaru Nakamura found a different plan and he played knight on e6, knight on e6 attacking the pawn, attacking another pawn, so trying to, you know, uh, win some pawns in this uh, strong pawn center. Uh, we have d5, knight on f4, and now d6. So the pawn is uh, very, very safe, uh, and these rooks are, you know, uh, pretty pathetic here. Uh, they are totally inactive rooks, so... Uh, very difficult position for Hikaru Nakamura. He play knight on d3, so now blocking the, the position of the rook. However, bishop on g4, attacking the rook. So rook has to be moved. We have rook on e7 and now immediately d7. So now we have the passed pawn. Uh, rook on c8 is coming. What to play? Uh, we have king on f8, now rook on c4, so winning this pawn, and now this knight is under attack and it's not protected, so black has to do something about that. Uh, knight on e5 doesn't work because of rook on c8, uh, and now after king on e7, rook e1 winning this knight. Okay, the king can't come because then the, the rook is hanging, so uh, winning the knight. Uh, so we have knight on b4 by uh, Hikaru Nakamura and now e6. f takes on e6, bishop takes on e6 and now rook a6 attacking the bishop, rook c8 and now king e7 defending the, the rook and now bishop on g4 still keeping an eye on d7. Uh, we have rook on a8, the, the only move probably, but still, rook e1 with check, king f7, and now rook e8, and in this position Hikaru Nakamura resigned the game. And he resigned because uh, he has nothing to do, he cannot just take this because uh, of the promotion, so that would be the winning. If something like uh, rook d on c8, it also doesn't work because rook c8 and now promotion is coming anyway. Uh, and if rook is taken, then of course the promotion on c8, so also doesn't work. Uh, rook a on c8, that also doesn't work because of the promotion on the queen. Rook c8 and just simply winning with the extra rook, so that's also possible. And finally, some moves like knight on c6 also doesn't work, simply winning this rook and the game, okay? So uh, that also doesn't work. Rook a8 and uh, with extra rook, of course, this is also winning. So this is why here Hikaru Nakamura just resigned the game. So very, very interesting. And I would like to show you the final standing. So as you see, not only Magnus Carlsen is the leader, but also Hikaru Nakamura and Ding Liren. So they have 11 points and Fabiano Caruana, because he won today, uh, but he won with the two points only, not with the three points, he has uh, 10 points. So just behind and we have, you know, four players who are, you know, doing really great in this tournament and four players who are, you know, not really great. So probably I believe that's gonna be final four, but still, uh, you know, players still playing, so everything can happen and uh, 
I hope we're gonna have more exciting games in this tournament. So if you want to see more games from Magnus Carlsen Invitational, press subscribe, smash the bell button and thanks for watching. If you like this video, press like. If you don't like for some reason, press unlike and see you in the next one.